when this couple set out on their honeymoon, nobody expected it to turn out this horribly. They said goodbye at the airport and promised to keep everyone updated throughout the trip. But suddenly, the couple disappeared for seven long years. And when they mysteriously reemerged, the woman gave a shocking confession. Vanished couple reappears after seven years, but then the woman makes a shocking confession. At the start of this bizarre journey, Judith and Andrew were just a happy married couple, being dropped off at the airport by their parents. Egypti was the destination for their honeymoon. But their parents didn't realize that this would be the last time they would see their kids in seven years. The couple promised to inform their parents and friends throughout their trip to Egypt. They waved goodbye with a broad smile as they boarded the plane through the airport gates. And for the first few days, they made good on their promise. Updates kept flooding in with mesmerizing pictures of their surroundings. But then, out of nowhere, everything stopped. This picture was the last photo sent to Judith's mother's cell phone on the second day of the honeymoon trip. And after that seemingly innocent moment, there was nothing but silence. There were no pictures, no interesting stories about ongoing adventures in Egypt, absolutely nothing was heard. Both Judith's and Andrews' parents talked to one another about this behavior change and came to the conclusion that the couple was probably just busy. It was their honeymoon, after all, and they were meant to enjoy it. But on the day of return, panic hit hard with everyone involved. The plane arrived on the tarmac at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. But when the large Boeing 777X opened its doors and its passengers got out, Judith and Andrew were nowhere to be seen. One by one, the plane emptied until there was no one left. But still, no newlywed couple stepped out. After the gate eventually closed, the worried parents went to the help desk for answers. Behind that counter, a staff member of the airline sat. Both parents nervously questioned the uniformed woman to look into this. But the answer she came up with added even more tension to the situation. Both Judith and Andrew never checked into the plane. According to the company's computer system, the plane left Egypt with every chair filled except for the one reserved for their offspring. Worries grew within the two families, and they tried everything they could to get in touch with Judith and Andrew. The first thought was to call their closest friends, but they also heard nothing after that last picture. The hotel in Egypt was their next safe bet. At that point, both families still held on to a grain of hope. But that hope was extinguished by the news the hotel clerk provided over the phone. According to the hotel clerk in Egypt, the couple arrived a little over a week ago, which sounded right. Judith and Andrew checked into the hotel and were seen for the first few days. But when it was time to check out, they never showed. But the clerk said something much more problematic after that. The female worker stated that she ordered staff members to check their room at the end of the day since they were overstaying their welcome. Apparently, Judith and Andrew disappeared without taking anything with them. All their belongings were still inside the hotel room, making it look like they vanished into thin air. After that disturbing news, things got serious. They had to contact the authorities in Egypt. Phone calls were made, but with a disappointing result. The police over there didn't seem to take the case seriously and calmly stated that they would look into it. Words that came across as untrustworthy. There was only one thing the group of parents could do. They had to search for answers and find their children in Egypt themselves. Both fathers agreed to set out on this mission together while the mothers got busy back in America. They hung up missing posters and used the media to get nationwide attention. Unfortunately for both mothers, their search quickly hit a dead end. Their hotline ran cold quickly, making all hope of solving this case fall on the shoulders of the two fathers searching in Egypt. The worried men started their search at the hotel where their children stayed. Upon arriving, they were greeted by the clerk. The same woman who spoke to them on the phone was happy to help out, understanding their concern. The two men were guided to Judith and Andrew's former room. It was indeed filled with their belongings. Even their passports were found, making it extremely unlikely that they left on their own regards. It was a worrisome sight, but both fathers tried to give themselves hope by thinking that without their passports, they couldn't leave the country. They were still in Egypt and probably hadn't gotten far. 
but what they didn't know at the time was that this case was far more complex than they ever imagined. The next stop was the local police station. But both fathers didn't hold much hope for cooperation after their last phone call. And they were right because the policemen were far from interested and only stated that Judith and Andrew would probably show up eventually. The cops in Egypt weren't going to help. The two fathers were on their own, and after a month-long search, they did not find a single clue to their whereabouts. Both parents searched a vast area around the hotel, but eventually had to return home defeated. The families never gave up hope, but a painful seven years passed without a single word. Back home, the police dug around for a while, but after a couple of years, the case was labeled cold. Until one day, after seven years, the phone rang in the home of Judith's parents. Judith's mom answered the call, and when she heard it was the police, her eyes widened. The police ordered Judith's mother to listen closely since they had news about their daughter and son-in-law. According to the uniformed man, the police found the couple this very morning in a remote parking lot somewhere in the United States. This unexpected news sends shivers down the worried mother's spine. Judith's parents almost considered the probability of seeing their daughter again impossible. So, the fact that they were now found and on solid ground in America was insane. Judith's mother quickly called her husband over, and together, they listened to the officer's words. How, what, where? Were there hastened words? The police officer calmly explained over the phone that the case was too complex to explain like this. So, he had a different proposition. He asked Judith's parents to come to the police station to witness and hear from their daughter themselves because Judith was already there and brought to the station. That didn't have to be said twice to the two worried parents. After a few final words, the phone was hung up and the worried parents rushed to their car. The car was placed in gear, and as quickly as possible, the duo raced to the police station. On the way over, their thoughts wandered. The two parents speculated the entire trip, trying to think of ways to understand where their daughter and her husband had been these seven years. But they could not come up with a single answer that made sense. But that was all about to change, because the station came in view after ten minutes. When Judith's parents arrived at the police station, they saw that the car belonging to Andrew's parents' car was already there. It was logical for the police to also inform them. And Judith's mom knew they must have been just as delighted as she was. She stepped inside with tear-filled eyes. After the doors of the police station closed behind them, both Judith's mother and father saw their daughter instantly. Judith was sitting in an interrogation room with her husband. They looked feral and scared, which made Judith's mother's desire for a quick reunion even more intense, but there was a problem. But things could not go her way, unfortunately. Judith's mother looked to the right and saw Andrew's parents sitting on a side bench. They were both crying and stated that policemen wouldn't let them inside the interrogation room. And this statement was confirmed by the officer who came by to address the worried parents. The policemen greeted them all and recapped the strange nature of Judith's and Andrew's discovery. He explained that a gas station operator had spotted the couple earlier this morning. The worker found them completely disorientated, laying face down on the station's parking lot about two towns over. And that wasn't all. The weirdness continued because the officer added that the couple was dressed in thin summer clothing while it was minus five degrees outside. The two were in bad shape and were suffering from severe hypothermia. These words caused all four parents to increase their anxiety, and they demanded access to the room immediately. The officer obliged, stating that he only wanted to wait until they got the whole story from the kids. But now that this was done and all four parents had arrived, it was time for them to enter the interrogation room. However, they were ordered to stand against the wall until Judith finished her story. As the teary-eyed parents entered the room, they looked at their children in disbelief. They looked like they went through some serious hardship, and in a moment, everyone would find out why. The police officer calmly asked Judith to explain the full story to her parents, just like she did with him. Judith wiped away some tears and started explaining exactly what happened to them. She started with the last thing and worked her way back from there. 
According to her, she and her husband, Andrew, were dropped off at that parking lot halfway through the night. They were bound and blindfolded. After hours of struggling, they freed their bonds and removed the pieces of fabric that blinded their eyes. That's when the gas station operator found them. But before the man let them go, he kept them in captivity for over seven years. He even followed the couple all the way to Egypt to kidnap them. And that's when Judith made a shocking confession. One that made both her parents look at their daughter in a whole new light because the reason for the kidnapping was all her fault. Judith stated that the man who abducted them was named Victor Porter, a notorious loan shark with deep criminal connections. The police looked at Judith sternly and took this case seriously. That much was clear to Judith's parents. Judith continued by explaining that after college, she developed a small gambling problem. But money issues got out of hand quickly, and she soon owed some bad people a lot of money. And the man at the top of the pyramid of money was Victor. He kept loaning her money at crazy rates until she eventually couldn't repay what she owed. Judith started to weep and explained that, in the end, it all turned out to be part of his master plan. Because what happened next? Victor and his men followed the couple to Egypt. It seemed like a lot of trouble to go through. But it was the perfect location for an abdication since, unknowingly, tourists went missing all the time in faraway countries. From there, he flew them back to the States in a private plane, and once there, he kept Judith and Andrew as prisoners for the last seven years. And he did so with ulterior motives in mind. For him, it was not just about the money Judith owed him. He wanted to use her for bigger fish. Judith and Andrew never went outside and were blindfolded most of the time. The blindfold was only taken off when Judith was ordered to execute Victor's master plan. The man had set up a dating profile for Judith. It was on a website that only attracted wealthy men. And that was not without reason because he used her face to lure these unknowing individuals into his dark web. Judith's parents were completely confused. They interrupted their daughter and asked where all of this was going. Was she the accomplice to this evil man? Why didn't she just refuse to help him? It was not like their daughter to do bad things to good people. But Judith could explain. Judith said that she had no choice. Her debt to Victor and his organization was too substantial and he would never let them go. Judith even stated that if it had been only her life, then she would have refused. But she also dragged her husband's life into this dark world. Judith couldn't let Andrew suffer because of her prior mistakes. So, she agreed to help Victor out. Making a deal that every time she lured some poor rich guy in, a part of her debt would be repaid, eventually leading to their freedom. She even had to call these men to make the story convincing. The mostly rich businessmen would then arrive at a predetermined location where they thought to meet up with Judith. But instead, they were ambushed by Victor's men. Most men were then beaten up, after which their valuables were stolen. But some even got blackmailed afterward. Victor made millions that way. After seven years of loyal but forced service, the debt was repaid. And even though Victor was a piece of trash criminal, he still was a man of his word. He ordered his subjects to blindfold the couple, and after that, they were taken out of the secret location and dropped at the parking lot. After that remark from Judith, the police took over again. The main officer smiled as he placed his hand on the table and looked at the worried parents. He told everyone in the room that the criminals made one fatal error that day. They blindfolded Judith, but not well enough. The scared and feral woman could peek through her blindfold and see one thing she was not supposed to. Judith saw a sign hanging on the warehouse where she and her husband were kept all those years. And with some quick research from the local police, they found the exact location. A team is already on their way, the officer said, smiling. And that's when things went quickly. Shortly after the full explanation from all parties ended, a sound was heard. It was the police radio on the officer's belt. We've got them, one of the team members shouted through it. It's over. Judith and Andrew couldn't believe it, and they started crying immediately. Their parents did the same, and all of them were finally allowed to hug one another. 
They were safe after all these years, and they were able to breathe easily for the first time in God knows how long. After that day, Judith and Andrew only saw Victor once more. And that time was in court about a month later. They testified against him, even laying bare all the things they had to do for him. It was nerve-wracking, but the judge understood why Judith did what she did. The trial was a success. Victor and his men were sentenced to prison for life and were never going to be a threat to anyone anymore. Judith was absolved of her because everything she did was under threat. The people affected by Victor's scheme would be made whole. And the future finally looked bright again.